now comes to questions for oral answer. And the first question stands in the name of Pesitar Sam Lotuinga. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What progress has the government made in getting its finances in order, reducing debt and returning to budget surplus sooner? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, uh, the government has made significant progress after inheriting ever-increasing government debt. In fact, across three budgets we've achieved $45 billion of savings for the period up to 2015, compared to the spending track we inherited from the previous government. The savings we made in Budget 2011 alone mean we will borrow about $10 billion less over the next four years than we otherwise would have. Now, this is particularly important in light of the growing volatility of international financial markets. Supplementary to the Honourable Minister, how will the government's decisions to control debt and spending keep Crown debt to manageable levels? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the, the government has made uh, balanced decisions about this by being willing to uh, incur some debt supporting the economy through the recession and in financing the Christchurch earthquake. Uh, however, we do need to show a path back to surplus. Uh, Crown debt is now expected to peak at 29.6% of GDP uh, and, theref and fall uh, from about 2015 onwards. We will turn to a healthy budget surplus by 2014-15 at the latest. Further supplementary, how did the latest fiscal and debt forecasts compare with the forecasts the government inherited in 2008? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, the government inherited a dismal forecast in 2008. Treasury's December 2008 update, 2008 update showed permanent deficits. Net government debt, based on the Labor Party's policies, was forecast to grow to 50 per cent of GDP by 2023 and keep rising after that. That would be a recipe for disaster. In the current global environment, where financial markets are very touchy about lending to highly indebted small countries. So what policies would put New Zealand's relatively strong economic and fiscal position at risk? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, that's a very good question. The kinds of policies that would do that would be promises of large spending, large extra government spending, that had to be financed by increasing taxes and borrowing more money, which I gather is what our political opponents are proposing. The Honourable Heather Roy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister of Finance. How much longer would it take New Zealand to return to surplus if New Zealand had a tax-free threshold of $5,000, removed GST from fruit and vegetables, and continued the spending track of 2005 to 2008, or would New Zealand return to surplus ever? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, under those assumptions, uh, I, wouldn't, I, I could hazard a guess. Uh, and I think it would be probably somewhere like another five or six years to get back to surplus. But that would mean, even on the, even on the package that was recently released by the Labor Party, uh, calculations show that they would be borrowing about an extra $18 billion uh, as a result of that big spending, order, high order. taxing package. Order. Point of order has been called. The Honourable um, David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, the Minister has no responsibility for Labor Party policy and he certainly doesn't have responsibility for policies order. which are not no, no. Labor Party the policies. Made his one point. Order. Members made his point perfectly fairly. The Minister should not continue on the line of the last part of that answer. Point of order. The Honourable David Park. Uh, I seek leave to table a table of the tax switch proposed by Labor showing that we reduced debt by another $7.7 .7 billion order, dollars, the, rather than increase order, debt. The source of this document just for the House to... Uh, prepared by Bill, uh, Sir and the Labor Party. Leave. Order. Order. Leave is sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is objection. Order. Order. 
The Honourable Heather Roy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister of Finance. What steps has the Minister taken to ensure that government spending will not absorb 97 per cent of nominal GDP growth over the next three years as it has over the past three years? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, that is a, that is a good question. We have taken two, two, uh, different, two different sorts of approach. One has been to constrain government spending so that it grows significantly uh, slower uh, than expected GDP growth, and the other has been to put in place policies such as significant tax change to help to encourage the growth of the economy uh, so GDP rises faster. Question number two, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. 